Hey, this is Mike with AshTractorMike.com. I'm speaking again today with Mark, who is a salesman at SNH Farm Supply in Rogersville, Missouri. He's also a guy that used to sell chemical for a living. He's got all kinds of certifications based on his experience and his training, and he's, he's really an expert on sprayers. And I get a lot of questions about sprayers. Uh, Mark, one thing I want to talk about today, uh, we've talked about tank size and about frame size. Uh, you see two different options basically when you're applying the pesticide to the ground and, and that is a, a, a boomless nozzle and a boom and you might explain where one fits in and where the other fits in. Okay, uh, today probably the biggest part of the business is on the boomless nozzles. Boomless nozzles you don't have as, as much control over your drift or anything like that as you would with a boom sprayer but you don't have the uh, in tall weeds, tall grasses, and in brush, you don't have the, the interference with your nozzles and your booms because they are stationary whenever they're put out. A boomless, it's following right behind your tractor, right behind, uh, with a three point, it's right behind the trailer. And you know, it's, it's shooting out at 34 feet on, on most of them and uh, 17 foot on each side, left and right. And, and it's giving you good coverage that way. Today we're probably standing in probably 20, 20 mile an hour wind, probably. And if I had alfalfa weevil or something that I needed to get out there, a, boom, not, a boomless machine would not be your choice. You would want to go to a boom machine where that you could lower your booms down close, closer to the ground and you have more control because the spray is coming out in a fan shape and it's it's going to be going down and and getting on that plant and killing the the insects or killing the grass that way and, and we'll show a picture of a boomless sprayer and what they look like and basically you have two nozzles going out in two different directions and they're uh they're, they're spraying in a fan shape around you you don't have that apparatus out there to get tangled up in stuff or to forget to fold it in and catch it on a fence post or something like that uh, the bulk of the sprayers I see selling right now, especially to my audience, are going to be boomless. Yes, yes, they will. And, and like I say, they're very forgiving, you know, in any types of areas and everything. And the thing is, it's very important to understand your, your distance of throw. And, and to me, that's, that's probably one of the most important things. Now, most boomless sprayers have an adjustment where you can kind of go up and down a little bit. If you're on a little windy day, you can, you can pull that boom down, the boomless apparatus down. How, how much does that help? It'll help quite a bit, but then it does bring down the distance that you're going to throw your spray. So, so whenever it's at its max height at the back of the machines, the way they're set, they're doing basically 17 foot on each side, 34 feet coverage. And if again, if I'm a farmer and I've got something that's eaten on my crops, I have to get out there. And so if I'm a, an agricultural application, I probably want booms. If I'm, if I'm a guy that's spraying food plots, booms are a lot more money. You can actually equip a sprayer with both if, if, if money is no objects. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm probably going to go with boomless if I'm a weekend farmer, a guy that's just spraying food plots, and then I'm going to watch the wind really close. And, and it's so important to try to go with the wind and not against it. Very much so. Very, very much so. Or to get you across wind and work it to where that it is going a direction away from any type of a waterway. One thing I, I noticed, I grew up on an apple orchard and my dad was so cognizant of the wind. We had a really good weather vane that he watched all the time and uh, he tried to go with the wind all the time. And, and uh, uh, there are certain days you just don't need to be out there. And, and the problem is with, especially with food plots, guys work in town, they want to get out on the weekend and get it done and sometimes you just can't do it. Exactly. That, that happens time and time again. So, so you want to really plan and and, and Use, use use mother nature to your benefit you know um, basically the best time to spray is early morning late evening uh, the other thing is you won't have as much wind either either time at, at noon time is usually the highest wind so you want to try to get in get your spraying done in the in the early part of the day and you think well I've got dew out there well dew works in your advantage believe it or not you know because that plant is wet and it is accepting the moisture coming from the spray and everything, so it's falling on that. So, so do is is an asset to you whenever you are spraying. So, always think about these type of things also. 
All righty, Mark. Thank you so much. Hey, I survive on web traffic. I'd be honored if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and share this video with other tractor enthusiasts. Hey, if you got questions or comments, put them below. We'll try to answer them. Hey, thanks for watching.